Welcome everyone, Costine here with a discussion about Grand Cafe in patch 4.0 and to talk about the Harmony system, the changes, and my perspective on the subject. I've already detailed what Creative Assembly changed, but I couldn't review things at the time. So this you could consider my review of the Harmony system. Now, I want to make it very clear that there is a significant difference between Yan Bo being an extremely powerful Legend Lord and far more powerful than either Xiao Ming or Miao Ying, and that being pretty ridiculous and buying power with the DLC versus what Creative Assembly has done with the Harmony system. There are plenty of reasons to criticize Creative Assembly at the moment. The pricing of the DLC, the overall content and the quality of the content in the DLC, the lack of changes for Kislev, the lack of changes for Kairos. But I think of all of the ar arguments that you can have against Creative Assembly at this particular point, arguing that they destroyed the Harmony system or that they made it easier is quite frankly ridiculous because it's not that the harmony system is somehow so much more powerful than it was before yes if you use it properly if you take advantage of how things have been changed you do you can gain quite a bit of power but there's also downsides compared to how the system worked before the way i would describe the new harmony system is that from a military recruitment perspective it can be a major buff from the perspective of the economy it actually is a major nerf in quite a few ways again not talking about yambo though i have been playing his campaign over here in the realms of chaos by the way realms of chaos is still pretty bad and to be clear yambo is well ridiculous because just you know confederations every single step of the way insane levels of power and so on and so forth it is pretty absurd to control the vast majority of cafe in 21 turns in realms of chaos i know it's realms of chaos but still it's ridiculous and to have also annihilated the zazel over there but that's a situation with yanbo situation in realms of chaos especially though he's pretty ridiculous in immortal empires but what about the harmony system well here's how it used to work and I wish I could go back, roll back to a previous version, but I can't at the moment, I, at least I don't see the option. But here's how it used to work. It would affect lords, it would affect heroes, it would affect research, it would affect structures. And you could either be yin or yang, but you almost never wanted to be yin or yang. If you're either yin or yang, you had made a mistake as a player. You could get perfect harmony on turn one in any campaign. Doesn't matter if you have, it was Miao Ying, Xiao Ming, Realms of Chaos, or Immortal Empires, you could do it within one turn. It wasn't hard to maintain it. There was no challenge for all the people that are arguing that there was some level of challenge. I find that particular argument to be absolutely ridiculous. There was no level of challenge. There was a level of genuine frustration because it was attached to research heroes, lords, legendary lords even. And especially it was bad when you confederated another Kafean faction and that would uh, completely throw everything out of whack because the AI is not good, was not good, and balancing harmony out in a campaign. And as people noted to me, there were very few times the AI would actually manage to get perfect harmony. But you as the player... The question for you wasn't about getting perfect harmony, it was about maintaining it. It was not challenging. I stress this point out because some people think that, oh, you could get negative, so thus it was challenging, thus it was better. That is bullshit. There was no level of challenge. There was a level of frustration about managing your empire because every single turn, especially when you confederated or you took territory and you got buildings, you had to worry about the precious, glorious meter. But effectively, any competent player who knew how to play the game, 90% of their campaign, if not more, I'm being generous with that 90%, really, but at least 90% of the time, if not higher, they would have, uh, or if not far more of their campaign, they would have perfect harmony. Unless they were confederating or unless they screwed up. Or unless you reached the point where you were just so sick and tired of the system and having to go every single turn on the roller coaster to balance everything out, especially when you confederated or took no territories, 
that you just stop giving a shit. Because at that point, you had effectively won the campaign. So it made managing a large empire annoying, very easy to get out of balance, not hard to, not hard at all to balance it, just really, really frustrating. But here's what Perfect Harmony gave you, and this is the reason you went through that merry-go-round. It gave you a significant amount of diplomatic relations with all of Cafe. It gave you 40 growth, 20% construction cost reduction, 8 control faction wide. That is absurd on its own, that 8 control. As a comparison, one of the main benefits Katrin, Sarina Katrin, has in her campaign is the fact that she has 8, that she has, what, 6 control faction wide? in her campaign, but high level of control anyway, faction-wide. And that's just one benefit. You got 40 growth, 8 control, 25% income benefit to Yin or Yang buildings, which ended up being about 20% economic benefit when you're accounting for the income you're earning from main settlement buildings and resource buildings. So about 20% flow economic benefit with the addition of the construction cost benefit, minus 20% construction cost and the ancestral warriors army ability. Basically, if you knew what you were doing, you would always use, you would always have perfect harmony. It got so frustrating to play a cafe campaign before patch 4.0 that I literally just used a mod to l reduce the frustration and it kind of became fun to play cafe. But it was also pretty absurd to have a system where you just flag get, got the faction benefit that just basically made every growth structure you had meaningless, that made everything cheaper uh, in terms of construction, because construction costs are one of the significant ways you spend money in a campaign. Okay, so they removed that system. It's no longer faction-wide. Lords and heroes still have um, yin or yang, and that does affect certain things. Uh, in particular, let's, let's say you have an yin lord. We look at the research tree. The first re research gives 5% campaign movement range for uh, yang characters and 5% casualty replenishment for yin units. Basically, this means you always want to ya have Yang characters leading your armies because 5% campaign movement range is actually quite a bit. Though, of course, you get screwed over because, well, confederations, still. Or certain traits not being really worth all that much. But, for instance, here I have a Yang general, and this is the second army I actually recruited in this campaign. Okay, so it's no longer... So the... Harmony, the balance, is no longer attached to lords, heroes, or research, which means instead of wasting so much of the precious research Cafe has, you actually have a reason to go for various things like Right of Yang, Right of Yin, Grace of Kuai Yin, and getting a bunch of things as opposed to what you would do before, like you would go for a couple of things, but most of the time you just stick down the middle tree with regards to research as it was before. But now Yin and Yang are province based. What is the better of the two? What, or Perfect Army, what's the better of the three? Well, there's pros and cons with all of them. There's benefits with Yin, there's benefits with Yang, there's benefits with Balance Harmony. Now, some people are going to make the argument that, oh, there's no downside, so you're always getting a plus. Well, the downside is you're, of course, losing what the others, what you're missing on the two others, and, of course, you no longer have that faction benefit before, so it's actually a nerf overall, believe it or not, from an economy perspective, not a military perspective. Let's go over this. Remember, you do need to have a substantial number of buildings to make to take advantage of yin or yang with harmony, with balance harmony, you just need to have the balance. But if you want to really take advantage of yang or yin, you do need a lot of structures. With yang, at 6+, plus, you get Research rate, not really all that relevant. Minus 30% recruitment cost, that is pretty substantial. Plus free recruit rank and local recruitment capacity. One of the problems Cafe would have before 4.0 is that they only had two recruitment slots. They could get to three with the commandment. Uh, now they can get to five. That's pretty sweet, pretty nice mixed recruitment. Less of a hassle, less annoying, less time consuming. But you do have to sacrifice quite a bit for this. While you certainly will save money when you're recruiting an army, you will ultimately lose money. Because how many armies are you going to recruit? Are, are you going to get Yang in every province? Probably not. You're going to have it in a couple of provinces. Maybe where you're recruiting the majority of your units. Like for instance, for me, that would certainly be the Imperial Road at the moment, given the structure it contains. But most of the time... Um, most of the time when you're talking about the empire, uh, w about your empire, you don't really want to go too far down the yank path. You want to do it for unit recruitment, but the benefits you, the benefits you lose out on don't make this necessarily worth it. 
Very powerful early on in a campaign, but there's also downsides. That's the thing. You go one path or another, you're losing out on things. That's the downside. That's the negative, the precious negative. Like some, some people have this perspective that, oh, if there's no negative, uh, it's just a massive buff. That's not how the game works. Okay, balance harmony. If you have a balance between the structures, you get 20% campaign movement range, minus 15% upkeep for armies and province, and plus 15% come from all buildings. This is less than we got for perfect harmony, though certainly easier to achieve in theory, because it, when it's tied to the individual, uh, to each individual provinces, it's pretty damn easy to actually lose overall harmony. Uh, and to go either yin or yang. But when you do have it, you do gain a fairly sweet economic benefit. Less than before, remember that. But that minus 15% upkeep benefit for armies and province certainly makes it worth it. This, by the way, helps you with defend the Great Bastion because the Great Bastion is always going to have perfect harmony because there's no structures that are that affect it. Uh, so it makes stationing an army in the Great Bastion far uh, cheaper than it was before. Not that it was expensive before, but... In a regular province, I'd say the campaign movement range is the real huge benefit here. It means your armies can traverse your territory. But you still don't have growth, and you still don't have construction costs, and you still don't have control. In fact, I have quite a few provinces that are going to rebel over here very quickly because they might be balanced, but they don't have a level of control. Having that 8th lo level of control is actually pretty substan was actually pretty substantial for Cafe because it meant you never face rebellions. Rebellions are not necessarily an issue... Uh, for, for Cafe, however, because of all the confederations, you're going to start doing chain confederations. Like, I just confederated Miao Ying before, and now I uh, confederated the Celestial Loyalists. And once that's done, I'm going to confederate Xiao Ming and the Burning Wind Womats. I'm not going to stop confederating. Bit of a problem, which is going to cause quite a few rebellions to spark here. But it is a 15% economic benefit, if you man maintain balance harmony. There's a bit of a downside with respect to this, because in order to maintain balance harmony, you do need both yin and yang buildings. The best way I've figured out to do so is to get yang economic buildings. You lose on the trade tariff of 4%, but what you will gain is more. Uh, they also slightly buff the yang building, so it kind of ends up being balanced. Like it, It's actually more that you get from yang at tier 3 than it is from yin. Depends on how many trade agreements you have. So 6% trade tariffs versus uh, 75 more income on Yang. But the real reason you want to get the trade exchange as opposed to the goods emporium is because you, will, you then want to get the administration center, which gives you 6% income and 30 growth at tier 3. That's how you achieve balance harmony. You get both these buildings, you balance them out. That's how you achieve the balance that is required in a particular province. And I think it's the way to maximize things. Though keep in mind, it's not the only choice. There are other choices. There are things you lose out. But like in a long-term campaign, when you have a province like here, the Celestial Riverlands, which is very safe, no one's going to attack it. That's kind of what you want to do until you reach like every settlement's tier 3. Then you have to make some decisions with regards to what you're going to do from there. Because then you should construct a third building in every single one of these settlements, what are you going to do? Like, I guess you could, you balance it out between like the conscription ops, uh, office and the conscription field with respect to that. Though both of them are kind of meaningless, but it is a way to get control. That's probably what you do uh, with regards to cafe and settlements, just to fill up those building spots, which you don't want to do, or you might just leave them empty, honestly, and don't bother with it. And then Yang, uh, then Yin. Yin gives you a minus one construction time for all buildings. This does require a fairly uh, decent level of Yin. So you need to get at least three to five Yin. So you need to get at least three structures with Yin in order to get that. That's a bit of a taller order than you might assume because like what you, you're noticing here is I don't have any kind of military buildings in a lot of these provinces so to actually go on the high end of either yang or yin you do need to go to dedicate yourself to that and what that means is like if say i want to you might think yin is very much worth it it can be but i would lose out a bit on money and it would be reliant more on trade tariffs and i would lose that 20 percent campaign movement range and minus 15 percent upkeep and of course the 15 percent income from all buildings 
which is pretty damn substantial. So you don't have a situation where you have both construction time, a construction cost, growth, and income at the same time. You have to choose. Do you want a bit of control with construction costs, growth, and construction time, or do you want just a flat upkeep? I think in the long term, you probably want to go for the uh, upkeep uh, and income benefit. It probably is worth it. But when you're building up a province, that uh, 30 growth that you can get can be pretty substantial. So it is a choice that you have to make. For my part, I do prefer having things balanced because that 15% income, at least early game when it's an, you don't require as much growth. But later on, you you could go yin, and once you're once you're tr striving to get your provinces to tier five, once you want to get those high-end unit recruitment buildings, then you might want to go for that. But if you actually want to recruit an army, then the ideal choice would be to go for yang. So that is the decision. Those are the pros and cons of each approach. I think if you're recruiting a lot of units, you want yang. If you're constructing a lot of buildings, you want yin. And once you're finished with both of those, you want harmony. Those are the decisions. What decisions you make throughout the course of your campaign depends on the stage of the campaign, the stage of the province, of its development, how close it is to the front line that you're dealing with at that particular point. Do you have armies that you need to traverse that territory? Are you looking to recruit an army in that particular territory? Those are the kind of decisions you have to weigh. So there's pros and cons. There's decisions, there's consequences, because one of the consequences, of course, is being able to recruit a larger uh, and higher ranked army cheaper fast and faster if you go Yang. Now, another change they made in patch 4.0 for Cafe, but not just Cafe, is the ability of just switching over structures from Yin and Yang very, very quickly. So if you just want to go from a Yang building over here to Yin to change the ba uh, balance of harmony, it will cost you a decent amount of money, to be sure about that. It will cost you, it will take the same level, uh, the same number of turns as it would to build it otherwise. But if you want to change the balance of a province, let's say, you know, I want to get a bunch of growth in this province. Well, I just go to the Yang buildings and I switch all of them over. So this would really push Yin very hard and I could easily get to that six, but it, I would still need to wait for a couple of turns for that to happen. And I will lose money doing so. So decisions, consequences for those decisions, and not the high level of frustration that we did before, but also not the same high level of power. Because yes, there was a lot of power beforehand. Just having a flat out 25% economic benefit for Yin and Yang buildings, which amounts to which amounted to like a 20% economic benefit, 20% construction cost faction wide, 40 growth, massive diplomatic relations, massive control benefit. It was a bit of a ridiculous benefit. Um, I have to admit. Now, I would have been fine if they just had given us a bit of a buffer with Yin or Yang, like with the system as it existed. There was never a reason to go Yin or Yang before. Like, Yin or Yang were pointless. Like, if you're either Yin or Yang, you had made a mistake, and you certainly weren't going on the far end of Yin or Yang uh, in a campaign. You might go, like, one Yin, one Yang. Now you have a reason to go full-on Yin, full-on Yang, or stay harmony, try and maintain that harmony in each province. And you have to manage each province, and you can specialize individual provinces. You can go for different buildings dependent on the province you're dealing with. So my conclusion is, it's a vastly superior system to the one we had before. It isn't necessarily as powerful to the one we had before. Now, I want to also state that if you know what you're doing as a player, if you appreciate how a game is meant to be played, then certainly you can take advantage of the system and gain more power than you did before. Because what you do, here's what I do. Here's what I did in this campaign uh, for Yan Bo. Like, I obviously used his instant construction will levy the provinces, right? So I got Yang. That gave me the recruit rank, the local recruitment capacity and recruitment cost uh, benefit. So I got Yang, Yang 1, allowing me to recruit more units. I instantly recruited them. I was able to get two armies very, very quickly in this campaign and ta capture a huge swath of territory. So much so that I was able to capture territory that Miao Ying and Xiao Ming would have captured otherwise, and that's how I was I've been able to confederate Miao Ying. That's how I took control over most of Cafe, being aggressive. So this system, if you use it correctly, certainly can give you a lot of power, but it's not the same level of passive power that you did before. It's a system, the way the system worked before, it 
punished you more or less for playing the game right because if you're playing the game right you're taking a lot of territory you're confederate confactions and oh joy you had to deal with a lot of crap mm, balancing things out once you did that now however if you play the game properly you have the tools to succeed in that respect and the game will reward you for that as opposed to just adding to a layer of frustration that's my perspective on this Cuisine signing out, don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.